around as we officially celebrate the 200th birthday of a noble Kingstonian, Sir John A. MacDonald. A defining figure in this country's history, Canada's first Prime Minister, Sir John A. MacDonald, one of the fathers of Confederation, is being honoured. CPAC joins dignitaries and politicians from all levels of government in Kingston, Ontario, as we mark the 200th anniversary of Sir John A.'s birth. Without Sir John A. MacDonald, Canada as we know it, the best country in the world, simply would not exist. Canada's 22nd Prime Minister reflects on the impact of the country's first leader. He used his sharp mind, ability to think big, and capacity to build bridges. He took a group of poor wilderness colonies and spent a lifetime of hard work building them into a promising young country. Prime Minister Stephen Harper addresses the crowd at a recent national tribute ceremony at Kingston City Hall. Also on hand to mark the occasion, former Prime Ministers Kim Campbell and John Turner. What is it about Sir John A. Macdonald that resonates with you, Mr. Turner? Well, John A. came as a young boy to Kingston from Scotland, got involved in municipal politics, in the political process, believed in democracy, believed in Parliament, and uh, he was elected and then got involved in the British colonies here in North America and said, we ought to be one country. He was totally human. He wasn't, you know, an icon. He didn't try to be, uh, you know, larger than life. But he had a vision and an energy and a determination to make this country something that would be real. John Alexander MacDonald was born in Glasgow, Scotland on January 11, 1815, but he was raised in Kingston, Ontario after his family immigrated to Canada when he was five. He started his political career as a Kingston alderman in 1843, the same year the cornerstone was laid at Kingston City Hall. We're inside council chambers uh, where Sir John A. Uh, once served. What does it mean to be mayor of Kingston in the same room where Sir John A. once served? Well, it's a tremendous honor, first of all. I mean, Sir John A. is Kingston's most famous son, and we're very proud of our history here in Kingston. And I know a lot of municipalities don't have a city hall like what we had. Uh, our city hall was originally constructed to be a parliament building, and that, of course, was back when Kingston was thought of as being the, the capital city of Canada. It was here in Kingston where McDonald's earliest political ideas were shaped. Years later, in 1864, in Charlottetown and Quebec, McDonald met with politicians from across British North America to lay the foundation for the creation of a new country. He ended up with the other fathers of the Confederation laying down a constitution that has endured now for almost 150 years. It is one of the longest running constitutions in the world. Canada became a country on July 1st, 1867. MacDonald, its first Prime Minister. He had a vision to unite the provinces, to get people to work together, to get different groups uh, to live together, to put together a new, a new country. His political influence and support grew over the years. Despite his reputation as a heavy drinker, various political scandals and some policies critics deemed racist. You know, it's interesting. Um, on this bicentenary, a lot of people like to sort of tear down the icon. And he was a man of his time, and you can't put your 21st century head on his 19th century shoulders. But in those days, people didn't have the open views of race that they have now. McDonald's triumphs outweighed his faults. In addition to Confederation, he's credited with establishing the Canadian Pacific Railway and the precursor to the Royal Canadian Mounted Police, among other initiatives. There's one thing that I think is very seldom re reflected upon, and that's the fact that he was the first government leader in the world to work for women's suffrage, to actually put a bill forward um, recognizing that, um, that women were human beings and uh, deserved the rights and privileges of the law. In 2001, the Canadian government officially declared January 11th Sir John A. Macdonald Day. And recognition of this milestone also extends to Scotland. The Speaker of the Scottish Parliament was on hand for the festivities. 
I think it's important uh, for people in Scotland to know um, that he was really the father of the Canada that we understand. Um, and I think there is a recognition of Sir John A. in Scotland, but I think because of the bicentenary, um, that recognition of Sir John A. is growing. Back at Memorial Hall, the actual site where MacDonald lay in state following his death, the honours continue. A restored portrait, a bicentennial stamp, a commemorative coin reflect the visionary who shaped our nation as Prime Minister for nearly two decades. The Canada we love today is in many ways so much more than even his grandest imagination could conceive. But in other ways, it is exactly the great nation to which he aspired. Sir John A. Macdonald died on June 6, 1891 at his home in Ottawa. He was 76. He's buried here in Kingston at this modest gravesite at Cataraqui Cemetery, a National Historic Site of Canada. The life and legacy of Sir John A., Canada's most famous founding father, lives on. Reporting from Kingston, Ontario, I'm Heather Seaman.